Hello, welcome. In the view of this first coming jam 2025, we are going to be looking at the topic cut across in the syllabus. The first topic in the syllabus is measurement. So let's look at the questions that we are going to see in the course of this exam. Let's go. The unit of moment of a couple can be expressed in what? The option A is Newton per meter. Option B is Newton per meter square. Option C is Newton meter. And option D is Newton meter square. For us to solve this question, the first thing that will come to our mind is this. What is a couple? A couple is defined as two equal but oppositely directed parallel forces not acting in a straight line. Okay? So let me do an illustration of that. Alright, so this is the diagram for a couple. Now, this diagram is going to help us to know what is moment of a couple. Okay? Now, this is what we call a couple. Now, this is the two parallel forces, the first force and the second force, but they are not acting in a straight line. Okay? They are equal, but they are what? Opposite to each other. Separated by what? A diameter. Now, the moment of a couple is the product of one of the forces. That is when we have one of the forces. Moment of a couple is the product of one of the forces multiplied by what? The perpendicular distance. Is that okay? So since we have two forces here, we are going to take one of the forces and the perpendicular what? Distance. Is that clear? Now this is multiplied by what? Diameter. And diameter is measured in meters. Okay? Now we should also remember that diameter is equal to what? Two radius. So in some cases, you may have that the moment of a couple is the force multiplied by what? Two radius. Now, for us to go back to the question, what is the unit of force? Unit of force force is measured in what? In Newton and the diameter is measured in what? In meters, right? Now, for us to get the units of the couple, moment of a couple, now, you say that moment of a couple, the unit of moment of a couple becomes what? Newton meter. Because force is measured in Newton and the diameter is measured in what? Meters. So, from what we have, the correct option to this question is option what? C. Is that clear? The dimension of electromotive force are option A, ml square t cube current, that is current I, okay, power minus 1. Option B, ml square t power minus 3 I power minus 2. Option C, m square l t square I power minus 1. Option D, m square l square t power minus 1 I power minus 1. Now, the first thing that will come to your mind if you have to solve this problem is you should ask yourself, what is an electromotive force? What is an electromotive force? Okay? Now, we should know that electromotive force is something like the EMF. Right? It's the EMF. Electromotive force is defined as the work done in carrying a unit positive charge from one point to another in a circuit. Okay? So, we can say that EMF, which is electromotive force, is equal to work done over charge. Okay? Then, what is work done? You remember that work done is equal to force multiplied by distance. Okay? Now, we should also break it down by saying that Force is equal to mass times acceleration multiplied by distance. Okay? All right. So, the mass is measured in kilogram. Acceleration is measured in meter per second square 
multiply by distance is measured in what? In meters. By the time you bring it together, we're going to have this kilogram meter square per second square. That is just the unit of work done. Now, what is charge? Remembering that current is the quantity of charge over what? Time. Now, for us to get the quantity of charge, we do cross multiply. Therefore, the quantity of charge is current times what? Time. Is that clear? Now, I'm putting it, you're going to have the unit as what? Current what? Seconds. Is that clear? Let's put it back into our equation. Our EMF is equals to, my work done already have kilogram meter square per second square divided by my quantity of charge, Q, is equal to current multiplied by what? Seconds. Then I'm going to carry it up to the other side. Then I have kilogram meter square per second square. Okay. Then current is minus one. Seconds is minus one, right? Then I'll bring it together. So it's going to give me kilogram meter square per seconds cube. Current minus one. This is just the unit of EMF. Now, for us to get the dimension of EMF, we are going to say that kilogram is unit for mass. We are going to replace it. We are going to replace it with what? M. We have M. Okay. Units of meter is length. We are going to write L square. Units of seconds is time. We are going to write T for minus three and we'll bring down what? I power minus one. Okay. So the answer to this question becomes M L square T minus three I power minus one. Is that clear? Now looking at the question, what do you think that will be the answer? The options we have, we have option A. And this is going to be the answer to this question. I hope that is clear. All right. So let's move to the next one. The values of x, y, and z respectively in the expression m power x, l power y, and t power z for the universal gravitational constant g are, so we are expected to get the values of x, y, and z if you make respect to universal gravitational constant. So we are going to find the units of universal gravitational constant and also find the dimension for us to be able to pick the values of x, y, and z, which happens to be the power. The first thing we are going to do is to look at the relationship connecting universal gravitational constant and the force. We know that F is equals to gm1 m2 over r square. Now for us to make this the subject I divide by what? By 1. I say cross multiply gm1 m2 is equals to f r square then i divide both sides by m1 m2 m1 m2 so this cancel g is equals to f r square over m1 m2 right the next two we're going to do is to find the unit of g unit of g okay the force is measured in kilogram meters per second square we have units of force as what kilogram meter per second square multiplied by meter square okay now divided by this is kilogram square okay because mass is measured in kilogram let's work out these two together to get kilogram meter cube per second square all over kilogram square, right? Then I'm going to carry this one to the other side to have a negative sign. It's going to give me kilogram meter cube per second square then per kilogram square, right? Now by the time we work it out, this one has a power of what? One. Let's work it out to get, this is kilogram 1 minus 2 by adding the what? The powers, okay? Then this is meter cube 
per second square, right? Which gives rise to kilogram per minus one, meter per three, and seconds raised per what? Two. Now this is the unit of gravitational constant. All right, now getting the dimension, I'm going to have that this is m minus one, l power three, and t power minus two. Okay, so relating it to what we have, we have l raised power x, l raised power y, and t raised power what? Z. Okay, so if we equate this two, automatically it means that x is equal to minus one, y is equal to three, and z is equal to minus two. So the answer is minus one comma three comma minus two. So looking at what we have, the one that has similar answer to what we are given is option what? B, which is minus one comma three comma minus two. I hope that is clear. If you are watching this channel for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you are preparing for the first coming job 2025. The physical quantity that has the same dimension as impulse is dash. Now we have these various quantities and we ask to find the correct one that has the same dimension as impulse. Now the question is what is an impulse? With the definition of impulse, we can derive the units of them and see the one that will suit in what we have. That becomes our answer. All right. So if we state that impulse is equals to the force multiplied by time, okay, is the product of the force acting on a particle and the average time increase is what it acts. Okay, so what is the unit? This the force is kilogram meter per second square multiplied by what? Seconds, which gives rise to what? Kilogram meter per what? Second, is that clear? So let's define these parameters. We have one after the other. Let's see the one that has the same thing as the units of this. If we, if we have the same units of impulse, that means we're going to have the same dimension as impulse. So the first we are going to look at energy. What is energy? Energy is the same thing as work done. I can say that it is force multiplied by distance. Okay, then the unit becomes kilogram meter per second square multiplied by meter, which will give me kilogram meter square per second square. Okay, then the next I'm going to look at is momentum. Momentum is what? Mass multiplied by velocity. I have mass multiplied by velocity. Right? So the next we're going to do is to state the unit. The unit of mass is kilogram. Unit of velocity is what? Meter per second. Now it seems like the impulse and momentum, they have the same unit. But let's work on the rest of the two. Let's see what we have. Okay? So let's go to surface tension. C. Surface tension is defined as the force acting on a body per unit length. That means force over what? Length, right? And the unit of force is what? is kilogram meter per second square all over what meter right it's going to come up to give us kilogram meter per second square per meter square okay now which is all right which is kilogram per second square right because Meter cancels each other. Then the last is pressure. The unit of pressure is force over area 
So what's the unit of force? Kilogram meter per second square. Okay. Then multiply by the area, which is meter square, which will give rise to kilogram meter per second square multiplied by per meter square. Sorry, per meter square. So if you work it out, you're going to get kilogram. Kilogram per meter per second square. Right. Now, if you're looking at what we have, you can see that the only quantity that has the same unit as the impulse is what? Momentum. And since they have the same unit, they are going to have the same what? Dimension. Is that clear? So the answer to this question is option what? B, which is momentum. So let's move to the next one. We have this diagram on the board. They said, what is the reading of the vernier scale above? Now, I'm going to use the scale to explain what they mean by that and probably to solve the problem and choose the correct option. Okay? Now, if you have this, now look up. This is 2 centimeters and this is 3 centimeters. This one's up is what is classified to be the main scale. Okay? Why the one down is the vernier scale? You must pay attention. Now, from this one, we have two centimeters. A digit or a line after before two centimeters is what? 1.9, right? Now, this is 1.8, and this is 1.7. Is that clear? Now, we have to read the measurement on the main scale first before we add that of the vernier scale. In the measurement of the main scale, now we saw this as what? 1.8. Eight zero. Then after 1.80, we saw this what? This line. This is the line that connects the main scale and the vernier scale. Automatically, whatever thing we have is going to end. So this is where the reading of the main scale is going to do what? End. Okay, so what we saw on the reading for the main scale is what? 1.80. So I'm going to write that the main scale is equal to 1.80 centimeter. Okay? Now, don't forget that this line is a line that connects the main scale and the vernier scale. So don't count this line. You're going to count with the line after this, okay? Because vernier scale has just 10 calibrations. I mean, can count it to go this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? Now, as we are counting, we're going to get to a point whereby the main scale and the vernier scale is a straight line. Okay, so let's go. We have 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Now look at the eighth one. It's as if it's a straight line connecting the main scale and the vernier scale. Automatically, that, begin, that becomes the reading of the vernier scale. So we have that the vernier scale is equal to what? Eight. Okay? Now we need to multiply by the reading accuracy of vernier caliper, which is multiplied by 0 0.01. It's going to give us what? 0 0.01 centimeter, sorry. It's going to give us what? 0 0.08 centimeter. All right, so I'm going to add the two scales together by saying 1.80 plus 0 0.08 is going to give us to be 1.88 centimeter. Okay, now looking at the options provided in the question, the answer that is similar to what we have from our reading is what option A, and the answer is 1.88 centimeter. Is that clear? Now, if you are watching this channel for the first time and you have not subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification button to get notified each time I send videos because I'm going to be looking at a review of all the topics that has been accredited for the forthcoming Jam 2025. I will see you next time in the next one. Bye for now.